From Eyewitness News, this is the Tarbox Toyota Hyundai Friday Night Football Wrap. Welcome to week 10 of the high school football season. Just two weeks remain before teams shift their focus to Thanksgiving Day. In Division 1, the race is on for the top spot. LaSalle in the driver's seat. The Rams enter the night undefeated in league play, but facing another big challenge on the road. They make the trip to Cranston Stadium to take on Cranston East. The Bolts coming off last week's shootout win in Portsmouth. Sit just a game back in the standings. LaSalle down 14-7 at the half, but the offense exploding in the second. Anthony Francis to Josh Morris jukes the defender, 18-yard score, his third TD of the day, 20-7 LaSalle. A little later, Rams go to the air. Francis finds Keon Wilson over the middle. Keon wins the foot race to the end zone, 59-yard pass and catch. Morris would then add the clincher, his fourth touchdown run of the night, taking out his own teammates on his way, 31 yards to the end zone. Rams stay undefeated, 41-13. After a week off, Bishop Hendrickson back at it against Barrington. The Hendrickson Mardi Gras Hawk jamming out. Tough going for both offenses, but Hendrickson able to break through in the first. Patrick Gill hits Mike Scarcella on the slant. Check out the effort. Dives in for six. Two point conversion gives Hendrickson an 8 0 lead. Barrington not finding much breathing room. Jake Simons taken down by Jared Witherspoon. Hendrickson leading after one and adding on in the second. Robert Leinberger, 27 yard field goal. Hendrickson stays a game behind LaSalle. They'll play the Rams next week, 18-6, the final. Portsmouth coming off that shootout loss against Cranston East, looking to get back on track in East Providence. We arrived at halftime with the scoreboard reading Portsmouth 40, EP 0. First drive of the second half, the Pats on the move again. Bobby Chavis, the keeper, big gain into Townies territory, but the drive stalled because of a fumble. EP's Ben Vega recovers. Portsmouth wins big 46-0, the final score. Coming up next on the football wrap, Coach Sassy in studio, plus a big game in Division Three. Hi, we're the Johnson Cheerleaders. Stick around for more of the Tarbox football wrap. Woo! The other big game in Rhode Island features two teams on a collision course from the moment the season kicked off. Middletown and East Greenwich both on defeated the winner, most likely claiming the top spot in the Division Three playoffs. The teams meeting under the lights in EG. The Islanders' powerful offense coming in, averaging over 45 points a game, but the Avengers' defense ready to play. Down 7 0 in the third. Dan Joslaw picks off Justin Seller. The Avengers able to turn that into points. Cardi Crawford takes the handoff, dives into the end zone. Extra point ties the game at seven, but the Islanders 13 unanswered in the fourth. They win it 20 to seven to stay undefeated in Division Three. The other Division Three game on the docket tonight. Lincoln still looking for win number one. Classical trying to snap a three game losing streak. Classical up 27 nothing in the fourth. Looking to preserve the shutout. They're smothering defense, getting after Spencer DeSatel, sacked by Ola Sagan Vadis later, desperation pass picked off by Derek Jackson. Classical goes on to win it 27 to 0, the final score. And it is time now for our coach's quarter. And joining me live in studio is St. Ray's head coach, Mike Sassy. Coach, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to come in and talk to us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. no problem. And I know you were scouting tonight. You guys don't play until tomorrow. Uh, but take us through a little bit. You guys are already in the playoffs, right? Is the seating still at stake, or is everything pretty much set up? Uh, the, the seating's still a little bit at stake. It all depends on uh, tomorrow. Basically, the Cumberland-West Warwick game has a lot to do with it. Uh, if Cumberland wins, we would end up being the two seed. If West Warwick wins, we're the three seed. Okay, and uh, how important is it for seating-wise for you guys? you look at it, is it important at all? Or you just kind of happen to be in the playoffs at that, this point and get your kids ready for postseason play? Well, in one case, the seating doesn't really matter because <laughs> once you get in, you can throw the seeds out the window. The nice thing about being a one or a two seed is you get a home game the first round, so oh, yeah. we'd love to have a home game. Yeah, definitely. And uh, talk a little bit about your team as we look at some of the highlights from this season. Uh, you got a good player there, number seven, a couple other good parts. Uh, has the season gone kind of how you expected? Or is your team overachieving, underachieving? Kind of take us through the season. Uh, I think we started off a little slow. Uh, we're a senior sophomore team, and mm -hmm. it took a little while for our sophomores to get, to get up to the varsity level. But they've uh, done a great job. Our team's really improved as the year's going on, which any coach would want to have happen. Um, 
We're not like a one individual, two individuals. We have a very uh, deep group at uh, running back, and we have a very good offensive line also. Yeah, talk a little bit about uh, Division Two as a whole. You guys jump right into the playoffs because you have the quarterfinal round. Uh, we just saw some pretty good highlights from East Greenwich down there. Uh, just top to bottom in both A and B, pretty deep uh, division, you would say. I would say so. I think there were six teams in our side of Division Two alone that could have been a playoff team. Uh, the, the parity is incredible. Uh, I know it's something that everybody always strives for. I know the NFL always strives mm -hmm. for that, and the parity in our league is very good. Yeah, it seems to be that way uh, year in and year out in Division II. Well, let's talk a little bit about you personally. Uh, your tenure is now what, in its 15th season, is that right? I, believe it's, I believe it's my 15th year, yes. God, uh, Well, how's that journey gone for you? <laughs> Could you imagine 15 years ago still being uh, in the uh, coaches' team? I guess I've been taking it one year at a time. I didn't know how long I'd stay <laughs> there. It definitely was a dream job for me. I went to St. Ray's and mm -hmm. played there in the 80s under Denny O'Brien. Um, and it became a dream job, and I've never really wanted to go anywhere else since. Yeah, we see that a lot with coaches that have the chance to either coach at their alma mater, or like you said, they don't want to go anywhere else. Uh, uh, what is it about Rhode Island football that has that draw back to you guys that played in the programs, and uh, now you're happy to take it over? Well, I think Rhode Island football sometimes gets sold sh uh, short across the nation, but there's a lot of good football players in this state. We have a lot of kids that from a lot of different schools that have gone mm -hmm. on play in college. Um, you know, it, it's just... It's, uh, it's where my roots are from. I grew up in yeah. Pawtucket. Uh, it's where my roots are, and I love being part of it. Yeah, and uh, real quickly, last thing, uh, two wins, right? Two wins for a pretty big milestone, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to take it one at a time. <laughs> uh, a couple more wins, uh, I, I guess I'll get 100. I'll be at 100. It took me 15 years to do it. I don't know if that's good or not, longevity, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we're almost almost there. Well, you know what? Uh, you only play, what, nine, ten games a year? So right. that's, yeah, 15 years isn't too bad. Uh, sure. Well, an early Craig, congratulations, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again after you get the 100th victory. Oh, but Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we, we appreciate you coming in and talking to us. So once again, uh, Mike Sassy, head coach of St. Ray's Football. Let's now throw it over to Sarah Hogan with D2 Highlights. Sarah. All right, thanks, Eric. In Division 2A, it's been all about Johnston all season long. The division already locked up. The Panthers looking to finish strong and continue to roll into postseason play, making the long trip south to take on Westerly. The Bulldogs trying to improve to 4 and 2 in league play on senior night. First quarter action, Mark Breton rolls right and connects with Philip Endafon, drags a defender with him for 30 yards, which sets up the Panthers going back to the air. And the bomb here is caught for a touchdown by Evan Hobson after a huge special teams play putting Westerly down at the one the Bulldogs Philip Lynch tries to air it out but he is brought down here for the sack by Philip Endifon he's all over the place Johnston goes on to win 38 10 your final play in game four Mount Hope and work that's winner goes into the playoffs the visitors out in front of 27 14 in the fourth but the Canes trying to rally late Jesse Sedoma his pass is picked off by Tevin Jones who runs it in 28 yards for the pick six then late in the fourth the Huskies slamming the lid on this one the handoff to Jesse Rayola who busts up the gut 50 yards to the house and that is a TD Huskies are heading to the playoffs a 39-14 win and Tollgate can tie Tower Hope the division with a win. Third quarter action, Tollgate on the attack. Jose Javier on the run here, shakes off multiple defenders and is finally knocked out of bounds at the one for the 50, uh, excuse me, 60-yard run, which sets up the sneak for Aaron Travers for the score. Tower Hope back on offense. Austin McQuaid answers back with a run of his own right up the middle, practically untouched. For 50 yards and the score, Charaho goes on to win 40 to 20, your final score. In Division 4, another team taking a shot at the best. Central Falls trying to take down undefeated Mount Pleasant, the two-time defending D4 champs. Enter the night, a perfect sickness in division play. The Kelties were ready for this one first quarter. Mount driving Randolph Zelay takes the handoff and strolls in for the score. Kelties lead at 6-0. Next possession for Mount Zelay takes the handoff again, finds the edge and blows by the defense on his way 55 yards to the house with no one in sight. Kilty shut out the Warriors and remain undefeated 33 zip the final. Smithfield hosting North Smithfield. Both teams three and two in division play. The Sentinels coming off a big loss to PCD last weekend. Northman driving in the first. Mike Ciceroni hands off to Paris Correa. Great effort for the five yard touchdown. Big night for Correa later in the first. He had this run 30 yards. Another great effort for the TD one more time. For Korea, he is just the uh, athlete of the night. I get this one-yard punch, 
punching it in, putting the Northmen up 21 0 in the first. North Smithfield rolls 42 to 17. And remember to go to WPRI.com to see everything you saw tonight, plus extended highlights and scores from throughout the region. Eric, let's send it back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Coming up when the football wrap continues, we step over the border. North Attleboro still honing in on a playoff berth, plus stops at Fian and New Bedford Vogue. Plus, we step away from the grid. After winning what was considered a must win last week, North Attleboro looked to stay in the mix for a division title and a playoff berth. The Rocketeers, one of four Kelly Rex division teams with just one league loss and a hosting Canton of 42 18 at the half. They continue to add in the second. Dwayne Hunter Jr. takes the handoff, met by a slew of defenders. Helmets flying everywhere. Somehow wiggles loose. No one between him and the end zone. The big run. Rocketeers go on to win at 49 to 30. Well, Durfee was supposed to host Bishop Bean tonight, but soccer playoffs moved the game to Attleboro, so the toppers. Basically on the road once again. Pick up the action right before the half. Durfee driving down 20 zip. Quinton Souza, nice catch. Michael Correa, Shamrock's lead cut to 14 at the break. But Fian comes out strong in the second half. Matthew Allen takes the pitch. He gone. Shamrock's roll 43-12. to 12. Fairhaven eyeing win number four in a row. New Bedford Vogue trying to avoid a three-game losing streak. The Blue Devils lead at 6-0, looking to add Christian Braga. Finds David Santos, but Santos stopped short of the goal. Jason Lefevre, Matt Hill, Bears take over on downs, but the Devils D also up to the challenge. Austin Daggle, Ryan Baldwin can buy for the stop later. Devils on defense again. Connor Flynn with the INT. Fairhaven pitches the shutout, improving to 6-2 on the season.